What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and today, finally, Apple released iOS 8. We've been waiting for a while, but finally, if you do have an iOS 7 compatible device, except for the iPhone 4, you can go ahead and update right this moment. And in this video, I just wanted to say, introduce you guys to iOS 8, show you guys the biggest points of what's new, what's changed, and just give you a little bit of insight of how iOS 8 is different from iOS 7. Now, I do wanna address one thing towards iPhone 4S owners. So every single year when a new software update comes out, you know, the least powerful device suffers the most. And in this case, iOS 8 is about twice as slow in loading things, just opening things up. I mean, not in terms of overall usage, but just opening things, loading your camera, loading applications, it's twice as slow. And I'm gonna be doing a video on this tomorrow, comparing the two iOS 7 to iOS 8 and how you guys can speed it up. But just take into consideration, iOS 8 will be considerably slower on the iPhone 4S. And so say it's a conspiracy every single year apple wants people to buy newer devices so the older ones they'll make you know on purpose slower but i don't know how true that is i just know it is you know quite a coincidence because it does happen a lot so i find that interesting but i do believe it's because of the hardware limitations you know ios 8 has a lot of new features a lot of new things and just usability wise it's a little bit different so the iphone 4s might not be as equipped and well prepared for it but anyways, let's go ahead and see what's new in iOS 8, some of the biggest features, just introduce you guys to the new software. Just a little side note, for those of you that are running GM iOS 8 or an older version, you won't see the final version in your software update settings. You're gonna wanna use iTunes to go ahead and update it, so you will need to download it from the links I provide down below in the description. But once you guys do go ahead and update and you are running it, you won't notice anything that much different. I mean, you'll have a couple new applications, namely health, and a couple other ones, so podcasts. So, you know, there won't be anything big. Maybe a little tip sky right here. Visually, it looks almost identical. The only couple of areas where it looks different is the control center. You know, it's less translucent, so it has a backing to it. Now, there haven't been any massive changes, so to speak, but there have been a lot of optimizations, a lot of system tweaks and additions, and I'll go through some of the biggest ones. So, first off, in messages, a Snapchat-like feature has been added. So if you go ahead and hold this camera button right here, it'll go ahead and use your front camera to either record a video if you hold it right here, or take a picture and send it right away if you just slide up. So that's cool, but on the other side, if you do the same thing to this guy, it'll actually record your voice, and you can play it back and send it just by you know, pressing that up button. So that's a really cool feature. Also, there has been a lot of work inside of messages. You can unsubscribe from group messages. And you see this guy, this is the new QuickType keyboard. It's a predictable, uh, you know, keyboard. It'll predict your text, nothing new, but finally good to see that added to iOS 8. There is now support for third-party keyboards inside of iOS 8. And if I go into the applications, I can show you right here in the top charts, there are already several third-party keyboards. Not only that, you can now install widgets inside of the notifications menu. So up here, if you select edit, you can actually play around with which ones you want. And if you install ones from the app store, they'll show up in a bottom category here and you can play around with them, which ones you wanna show or not. So that's pretty useful, but you know, it's not third-party support for actual widgets on your screen, only in the notifications and third-party keyboard support. Not only that, if you wanna edit a photo, there is now support for third-party filters. So in here, you'll be able to see any third-party filters you do add. There have been tweaked editing controls, so a lot of fine-tuning. You know, if you wanna edit it like this, it's pretty cool. So a lot more control in iOS 8, I would say, with a lot of things. Inside of the camera, in here, you now have a timer up here, really convenient, should have been added a while ago. I don't know why Apple just added it now, but that's cool. We do now have time-lapse, takes pictures, you know, a certain set of time, and gives you a nice, cool time-lapse. So that's really convenient. You know, stuff that should have already been there, but it's good to see it finally added. You know, you will notice you do see a health application now. This uses the data, you know, how you move in your iPhone if you choose it to see how active you are and it'll be used with Apple's watch product as well. So it's very useful, but not something I personally will use. Inside of here, you have tips, just gives you tips for iOS 8, nothing special. Most of us know how to use it anyways. You now have a dedicated podcast application and inside of weather, it's been fine tuned. So you now have nine days of forecast and it gives you information and it actually takes it from the weather channel instead of from Yahoo. So, you know, a lot of optimizations here and there. Nothing huge, but 
mostly little things have been added, things have been fine-tuned in. Now as for stability, I wouldn't say it's better than iOS 7. I've noticed a lot of crashing and the battery life is not great. So I am hoping Apple will be releasing a software update pretty soon as I'm not happy with how it's running right now. It's not optimal. And guys, there's a lot of other changes. If you want to see every single detail, you know, I'll put a link up here to another video more in depth where you can see more of the changes, but that's just off the top of my head some of the biggest things. iOS 8 in general is great. I love it, but if Apple could optimize it a little bit better, which I'm sure they will within the next few weeks, they will be releasing a new software and I would be happy if the battery life was just a little bit better. But guys, that's iOS 8. Hopefully I introduced it to you just a little bit. And anyways, you know, do enjoy iOS 8. I'll be releasing many videos, you know, how to get better battery life, how to make it faster, just stuff like that. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Have a great day. Peace.